YouTube boss it going the goat house is back and today we're going over the latest NFL trade deadline rumors trade deadlines on November 3rd so as soon as we get through these week eight games that are uh, happening this Sunday and Monday we might have some big time trades so we're going to break down the latest news and rumors and we'll see what to expect we'll try to you know gather all this information and what can we actually expect to happen uh, at the trade deadline here so we're going to break it down follow that Twitter it's on your screen. There's a link down below. Instant reaction to all these moves, all these news, and we're talking during live games uh, for pretty much every NFL game there. So it's a must-follow, in my opinion. Much appreciated if you can check it out. Link down below. Instagram, podcast, Patreon, a lot going on here. Uh, we got the full coverage on the trade online on the channel. We also have weekly coverage for every game, power rankings, plenty more. We got you covered. Please subscribe. Be much appreciated. I mentioned that Patreon, a lot of extra content on there as well. Junior's NFL score predictions every week. My bets of the week for NFL and college football. Updated playoff predictions every week, round by round, and Super Bowl. Bonus content, Discord access, always adding more. A lot of you have signed up for that. Really appreciate you showing your support. Really appreciate it. Uh, what's going on in these rumors, though? The Jets, kind of multiple in one here because we got multiple players. The Jets have received calls on Avery Williamson, their linebacker, George Fant, a tackle, Chuma Adoga, another tackle, and Quincy Wilson, a corner. So these are the players they received calls on. Obviously, the Jets may be having somewhat of a fire sale um, because, yeah, they're, they're still kind of in that rebuild mode. There was rumors on Quinn and Williams, but they'll take calls to see what teams they have to offer, but there's nothing big there. Avery Williamson's a guy we've been talking about for a couple weeks now. Almost expect a you know a deal to get done there, you would think, because expiring deal, you might be able to get a little more than that you know, compensatory pick in 2022 if you lose in free agency, uh, and you might be able to you get that pick a year earlier, perhaps too. Some teams that could be desperate for inside linebacker help. You know, we talked about, uh, you know, maybe the Packers team like that. You know, I was thinking, you know, the Browns as well. Uh, the Steelers are a wild card team. You know, I don't know if Avery Williamson's going to make or break their team, but they did lose Devin Bush. They may be able to get a fourth round pick for Avery Williamson, but then a couple tackles because there's rarely. You know, somewhat experience or more uh, in in terms of offense alignment, in terms of tackle specifically, uh, ever available via trade. So uh, we got some rare occasions here. So teams might might be interested. You know, any there's a lot of teams that need offensive line help. A lot of teams, pretty poor offensive lines in today's NFL, really. Um, so those guys could go for a later round pick. Quincy Wilson, I'm surprised there's been a call on him. He's kind of been disappointing. Heard Pierre Desir. Um, who's probably the Jets' better corner, uh, could be on the way out too, but they do like him, but he's on an expiring deal. So something to look out for the Jets. I'd be surprised if they didn't make a deal. Like I said, I think Williamson could be sent off. I don't know if the, the Jets could send one of those tackles away. They could sell one. Uh, I, if they get like a seventh-round offer for Quincy Wilson, I'd, I'd say they'd take it, but they got a call, so that, that's pretty interesting. So maybe they like him more than we think. Uh, talk about the Texans. Texans are open to trading pretty much anyone except four players. The Sean Watson, pretty obvious. I'd say Laramie Tunsil's pretty obvious as well. They traded a lot to get him. They wouldn't get the same return. They extended. They gave him big money. They definitely believe, they believe in him to protect Deshaun Watson. So that's not surprising either. Titus Howard, a year ago, was their first-round pick. They like him a lot as well if he's healthy. So that's not that surprising either that he's, um, you know, off limits. J.J. Watts, somewhat surprising. I kind of had a feeling that they... They would. They wouldn't really want to trade him because he's such like. I think there's too much attachment to the organization there. You know, he's still very, very good, obviously, um, but he is getting up there in age. Uh, you know, and he does have the injury concern. And the Texans. Well, I guess the reason they wouldn't trade him is yeah, because you know they love them some JJ Watt. They're attached to him, but they believe they can turn us around in a hurry. You know, tr uh, you know, get back to contending maybe next year or the year after. But to me, I think that's maybe too much confidence. If you have Deshaun Watson, guys like that, then maybe uh, you're allowed to have confidence like that, high high expectations. But if you can get a second round plus for J.J. Watt right now, I would do it. I, I would do it. So I don't think J.J. Watt should be off limits. I would disagree with that, but that seems to be the case So uh, for the Texans. I know the fans are probably kind of iffy on that. Like, you know, it's going to be tough to see J.J. Watt go, but, you know, maybe we should trade him. I don't know, but they're probably confident you can contend in a year or two, so... That would be the only that only thing that makes sense why they would hang on to him. Uh, but the Texans are receiving calls on receivers: Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, Kenny Stills. 
So, you know, Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, obviously starters uh, on most teams, probably every team. Kenny Stills, uh, more of a, ro a solid rotation guy. Uh, they're open to moving them from the right price. So people kind of think that, yeah, they're open to moving guys besides those four that we talked about. So we might, and they, they need draft picks bad. So we might be able to lowball them on guys like Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, etc. That's not really the case, though. The Texans are open to moving them. But for the right price, you know, they're not just going to give away these guys just because they're losing. That wouldn't make they wouldn't make too much sense. You know, Will Fuller, they drafted him in the first round. They like him a lot. Brandon Cooks, they just traded for him, so they're not going to give him away. Kenny Stills could probably could be had for a, a lower end pick, so we'll see what happens there. But kind of have, having to do with the Texans here, the Packers, actually, they're interested. They called the Texans about Will Fuller. Uh, and just the thought of Will Fuller on the Packers just kind of kind of excites me a bit. That would that'd be pretty fun there. Um, you know, explosive, speedy receiver that knows how to get separation, that, that home run ability uh, with Aaron Rodgers. Um, so that makes sense. The Packers, you know, missed out on getting that speed star, similar style player on Robbie Anderson that they might be regretting on, you know, getting. Um, they, they passed on rookies, obviously, in the draft. And uh, Alan Lazard might be the reason for that because Lazard was such a good threat, such a good deep, deep threat, but then he's out for most or all of the season here. So that was unfortunate. So now they're kind of getting back into the mix here on a receiver. Uh, I'm kind of, I haven't heard this, but I'm kind of gathering that the price might be too high. You know, who knows? They can wait till the day of the deadline. They, they maybe have a deal in place. But I, you know, I don't know if the Packers would trade a second round or a second round plus, maybe a second round or a second round plus, and I think that's what it would take for Will Fuller. It, it honestly could take a first round pick, and I don't think anybody's going to trade a first round pick. So I think people kind of get confused because the Texans, you hear the Texans are open to dealing anybody but the four guys that Will Fuller wasn't involved in. So why are they asking for so much? Well, they don't have to trade him. You know, um, you know they don't absolutely have to. They're going to value him the way they value him. He's 26 years old. He's a huge piece of their offense. You've seen him in the past. When he's in, they're great. When he's out, there, they really feels like they're missing him. Um, they draft them in the first round. You know, keep in mind. So they like Will Fuller a lot. You know, they they really do. So uh, and they're more likely, they're most likely to extend him this offseason. So that that's why a team's probably not going to trade a first round for a guy that has a little bit of injury concern, but they'll have to extend as well. Uh, the Packers may be open to trading a second. The Texans may be opening to. To accept that, but it might take a little more than a second. Second and something else there. So uh, the Packers will probably continue to call around. You know, they I, I'm, when they called, if they had an offer, I'm just predicting here. You know, I think they probably would have offered a third or a fourth plus, which is going to be on the lower end, but it would make sense for the Packers to start with that for sure. Um, so yeah, definitely something to look out for there. The you know Will Fuller, the Texans, but the Packers in the receiver market in general, and there's quite a few that could be available, but. Uh, Will Fuller would definitely be a key addition to them. I think Brandon Cooks on the Texans, too, I think that would be a good addition. Uh, I guess the only knock with those guys is, is the injury concern, which haven't really, hasn't really been a big problem yet this year. Uh, the Vikings. The Vikings are open to dealing a lot of players, apparently. Uh, Anthony Harris, which we've been talking about, makes sense. They're open to dealing him after the game, the franchise tag. Uh, because they didn't want to sign him long term, so he's on the franchise tag. That means his contract's going to be up at the end of this year. Uh, so that means they're going to end up with a compensatory pick in 2022. They would prefer to uh, get a pick this year. You know, that compensatory pick would likely be a third, could be a fourth. So they could accept a fourth this year, but be looking for a third this year. Because the Vikings, you know, obviously a losing situation, but they're not going to go to that stage one of rebuild. You know, they're, they're going to. They're going to look to do a quick retool. A lot of instant impact rookies these days in the NFL. So get the picks right now. Turn it around quickly. They have other playmakers that can help them win now. So that would make sense. Uh, Riley Reef, you know, they were open to trading him. Uh, they asked him to take a pay cut. He didn't. He didn't want to do it right off the bat. Uh, and that was going into the season, and uh, they explored trade uh, options, and they really couldn't find anything. Uh, so he ended up taking a pay cut to stay. So now, you know, teams realizing, you know, because of injuries or just realizing that their offensive line situation is not where they want it to be, uh, it's a possibility they can move him um, now. You know, Kyle Rudolph, you know, teams have called about Irv Smith. They're not open to deal. Irv Smith, Kyle Rudolph, pretty big cap hit. Um, you know, not a young guy. They're looking to get younger, maybe more athletic, so they might be willing to deal uh, him. I've heard Pat Elfline's name come up. He's had a, had a rocky, uh, not the best career, young career in Minnesota, but he was hurt this year, and they took him out and put a backup in, and that kind of made Pat Elfline look better, actually, because uh, they were much better with him. Now he's coming off the IR, uh, but he could be dealt. He could, it's a name. I'm kind of surprised by that one. 
Um, you know, but he, he could be dealt. Tajay Sharp's names c- come up, but I don't see them getting anything for him. Um, a swap of picks, maybe. Uh, I don't really see that one. So the Vikings are looking to deal guys to get picks back uh, because um, they, they've lost picks on Ngakwe, gain those picks back, but not the appropriate picks. Picks, excuse me, and, and they, uh, you know, kind of dropped down with those picks there from, you know, sending to Jacksonville, getting back from Baltimore. So they've dropped down a little bit. So they're looking to get picks back, but add picks to get a try to get a quick turnaround here uh, for Minnesota. Uh, Adam Thielen's name came up. I wasn't buying any of that. I won't say 0% chance he gets traded, but I think it's very unlikely. Harrison Smith's came, name came up. Um, it's a lower end one. It's probably not going to happen, but um, there's a reason I think the name came up. You know, I think they're, they, they could be open to dealing it for the right price, but these are the guys to look out for here. Uh, the Vikings might be asking too much for these guys, so I wouldn't say I'll, I'll be shocked if they didn't make the deal a deal. But with all these names coming up, and you know they're trying to get picks back, we almost should be surprised if they don't make one deal. So we'll we'll see there. Uh, the Browns, this is pretty interesting with something new recent. Uh, the Browns kind of are looking into trading Olivier Vernon, uh, who I've been kind of promoting they trade for the last couple of years. He's played up solid this year, but he's really declined since you know a few years ago, um, and he could be traded away in attempt to gain another edge rusher. So the Browns, this might be a long shot. This is legit news here, legit rumor but it, that they want to do this, and it makes sense they want to do this, but it's kind of a long shot because two things kind of need to happen here. They want to be able to send Vernon away, but also bring in an edge rusher. I think they almost have to have something in place. I think they can om- almost bring in the edge rusher first because they have the cap space, but they want to make sure they ship off Vernon. He's got a pretty big contract uh, because I think they can upgrade. And that it pops in my mind a guy like Ryan Kerrigan, who I like, who I accept. We talked about him. We're not going to talk about him too much besides this point right here in this video because we know he's he could be had. You know, he could be dealt. Maybe the asking price a little high right now for an expiring deal. But I think Kerrigan's much better than Olivier Vernon, in my opinion. Um, I think most people's opinion that should be the case. Uh, maybe a guy like Melvin Ingram, too, would be a wild card from the Chargers. I don't know if they want to move on from him, though. But those guys would be an upgrade. I just keep thinking, you know, this defense gives up yards, it gives up points, but they make big plays, and that's because guys like Miles Garrett, you know, force the pressure, force the sacks, force the quarterbacks to do interesting things, to say the least. And then guys like Denzel Ward make plays. They also have Shell Richardson on the inside. So if they add another legit edge rusher, Vernon's pretty inconsistent, but he had, had has had his moments this year. If they add another legit edge rusher, that can be scary. That can be damn scary. They have cap space, um, so they don't necessarily need to move on from Vernon, but they, yeah, they'd be, you know, be more comfortable. So that's something that's interesting. Uh, they would like to move on from Vernon and then bring in somebody else. The only thing is, you know, some people think it'll be easier for them to move Vernon. But I don't know if it's that easy. You know, I don't know if he's playing to his contract right now. And I think teams would rather trade. I think teams would much rather trade for the Kerrigan or whoever else is, even the lower, the cheaper guys. Uh, but maybe somebody can trade for Vernon for cheap, and they'll like that. They view him as a fit. He's experienced in four three and three four. So we'll see. We'll see. I don't really. I don't like him as a three four edge though. You know, I don't know if I, I like him there. But he has experienced both. Uh, playing 4-3 end for the Browns, of course. So we'll see. We'll see where that goes. That's interesting because that could be a two-parter there. Uh, next, the Bengals found this very interesting. Uh, the Bengals have declined offers on Geno Atkins. Teams, teams, you know, multiple teams have called about Geno Atkins and uh, were looking to make an offer or did make an offer. And the Bengals have declined him. They said he's kind of off the table right now. And that, on all levels, is interesting because... One, the Bengals aren't playing a whole bunch. Yeah, he had some injuries, so maybe they're trying to ease him back into it, but they aren't. he hasn't been happy with his playing time. Another one is the Bengals are a young team. They're looking to continue to build off that uh, and be the team of the future. Geno Atkins, I guess, could be a part of that the next couple of years, but it doesn't really make sense with their current philosophy. Um, another thing is the Bengals, you would think, have a lot more cap space uh, for a young team, but they really don't because they did clear some of Carlos Dunlap, but they really don't because of a guy like Geno Atkins. He has a pretty beefy contract, a pretty, pretty big cap hit the next couple years, and he's still a really good player, but he's really, you know, he's not really playing that, you know, that contract. I guess we need to see more of him, but, and I guess that that's why, uh, you know, he hasn't really played to that quite yet, and that's going to be a hit for the next couple years. So I really thought other teams wouldn't trade for Geno. I thought the opposite. I thought the Bengals would be trying to trade him. And other teams wouldn't be able to do it, maybe for a very late pick because of the cap hit they're taking in. So I found this very, very interesting on many, many levels here. Um, 
Yeah, I'm guessing teams were offering little, but I would still almost take that from the Bengals. You know, what teams out there are a Geno Atkins away from contending? I don't know if there's that many teams that need the D-tackle plus have the cap space to pay Geno Atkins. There's plenty of teams that need a D-tackle. There's plenty of teams that have the cap space. Uh, and there's plenty of teams that or some teams that could be interested in a guy like Geno Atkins. We put those three together. How many teams do you have? I feel like there's not that many teams at all. Maybe only a couple. So I was surprised by this. Uh, I'm surprised that there was that many teams calling. I'm surprised that the, the Bengals just aren't interested. It's just surprising on every level here. So weird one. Very strange one. Uh, Patriots. More interesting stuff here. Uh, the Patriots haven't really gone out of their way to make calls. Like, hey, we're dealing this guy. Um, hey, we're selling this. We're selling that. They haven't really done that. But they, they've kind of made it clear that, hey, if you want to make a call, uh, we're open to dealing anyone, maybe for the right price. But, yeah, we're, we're almost was the exact quote, almost anyone. So that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, you can call about pretty much anybody right now. The Patriots, the guys can be had. It's not going to be extremely cheap or under their value, of course. Belichick will be smart with this, uh, obviously. And we've heard all these. Yeah, we talked about it uh, pretty in the early stages of it. We talked about Stephon Gilmore. You know, not too many people were talking about him being available then. Now now people are starting to talk about it more. So everyone knows about it at this point. Gilmore could be had. Um, he wants an extension. He has actually one more year. He's under contract next year, but he wants an extension. He wants more money uh, after this year, which would make sense because how other corners are being paid, and he's been the best cornerback in football, um, yeah, but obviously, the last couple of years. Uh, so he could be dealt, and the Patriots look like they're not winning anything this year. He, he could be dealt, and there's definitely got to be dealt. the best corner in football, arguably the best corner in football on a cheaper deal right now. They can use him as a rental, then trade him off. They can use him as a rental, then extend him, whatever. It, teams will be interested. Uh, but you kind of knock some teams off that list because you would think the Patriots would be looking for a first rounder, maybe at least a first rounder. So that there are some teams that definitely would be interested in Gilmore, but they have a pretty good pick. They might need quarterback at the same time. You don't want to trade a first round pick, even if you might need a quarterback of the future. So a lot of those teams get taken off the list. I keep coming back to the Tennessee Titans. You know, a contender right now, they'll have cap space. They'll probably won't re-sign Clowney. Uh, they need a corner really bad. A cor they're a corner away from being a contender. Vrabel's interested in those Patriots type guys. You know, they'll be definitely interested in Gilmore. I keep coming back to that. Uh, I talked about the Browns because they have the cap space. They have the need at corner. Denzel Ward, Stephon Gilmore. Man, that would be fun. Uh, maybe they're looking to trade. We talked about the Browns already. Maybe they're looking to trade Vernon uh, to pay a guy like Gilmore. So maybe it's not another edge rusher. They can get a cheap edge rusher as well. They got a lot of cap space. I don't want the Browns to sit there with all that cap space and not do anything and let it go to waste. Obviously, you don't want to be a madman and spend every every penny. That's ridiculous. But, I mean, come on. Use some of it. Help yourself here. Uh, help your team. So teams like that, I mean, there's multiple teams we can talk about. But, yeah, how many teams would trade it first? I wouldn't say 0% chance. Um he could be had for a collection of picks that are not a first-round pick. So like a second this year, a second next year. If a team has two twos, a second, third, second next year, you know, something like that. Something that's almost equal or try to get equal to a first-round pick. I, I, that's possible. I'd say it's uh, on the unlikely side, but I'd say it's possible. But why the Stephon Gilmore rumors have got even more interested? Well, now the Patriots have come out and said that they're open to deal almost anyone. So it's becoming, it feels like almost the fact that he could be had. Uh, but some Somebody came across that he has his his uh, house for sale actually in um, you know in New England there so that that's 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 interesting his house is up for sale and he actually try I don't know how true this I don't usually don't like to talk about these things but it seemed pretty credible credible there um, that he's trying to get it sold pretty quickly I thought that was pretty interesting I don't know I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna say that yeah he's getting deal dealt because of that uh, this is you know that's a fact I'm not really saying that I just thought that was interesting another thing is. Here we are today, the 30th, 30th, it's Friday, heading into week eight. The Patriots play the Bills this week. Uh, and now all of a sudden, Stephon Gilmore popped up um, you know, on the injury report, tweaked his knee in, in practice, and it's uh, up in the air for him playing this. I thought that was interesting. He might have he might have tweaked his knee. Who knew? Who knows? But thought that was interesting. That came up, so that kind of makes you wonder here. With this at this time, with these rumors come up. So this is very interesting on all levels here. Uh, so it's definitely something that's a big one to look out for. I think there's a possibility, you know, 
he can get traded. I think uh, there's actually a decent possibility there, which it's kind of rare to see something like this. But I think uh, teams are getting more and more active every year here in the trade deadline area of the season. Uh, and then one more, not nothing major here, but the Falcons are expected to make a deal mainly because of Tack McKinley. Uh, you know, I think the Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Oh, I don't think I know th those those rumors are BS. Uh, too much dead cap, and they like those guys a lot mainly. Um, Alex Mack, there's been some discussion on that, but I think Tack McKinley, several teams interested, several teams called, and he could be on the move. He's been disappointing in Atlanta, uh, and he's on an expiring deal. You remember they declined his option heading into this year already. It, I think correct move. Um, but teams are interested, and I, I definitely understand why. There's teams that definitely need edge rush. Carlos Dunlap off the market. Maybe they don't want to spend you know a third round pick fourth round pick on a guy like Ryan Kerrigan perhaps so that's why they like McKinley it's a cheaper option that has a lot of upside because McKinley was a first round pick for a reason he has his moment still the Falcons it seems like pass rushers just don't work in Atlanta I think other coaches other teams will be confident they can kind of coach this guy up or anybody up to make them somewhat successful here especially with the guy with this upside so teams would be interested teams and that could drive the price up a little bit. You know, you'd think around a sixth round plus, maybe maybe a fifth round, as high as a fifth round because he has upside. And that's my my maybe where it's at if multiple teams are maybe fighting. No, I don't know if it's a guy you really fight over, but it could be a little bit of a bidding war there. So that's pretty interesting. The from what I've heard, it sounds like it's likely he'll be dealt, but we'll see. We get those types of things every year, then we a little underwhelmed, but uh, based on what we're hearing, yeah, that's pretty interest interesting. There's a lot of other guys that could possibly be moved on the block. We've talked about them in past videos. They're pretty obvious. Uh, but these were the most recent you know, big news here uh, across the NFL for the NFL trade down line. We're going to have more videos. And, of course, if any big deals go down, we'll have grades on those. And I'll give you my takeaways, my thoughts. Uh, the smaller deals... Um, you know, probably we'll instantly talk about it on Twitter and I'll give grades there. So you want to follow that Twitter for sure. We got all kinds of content on the channel, plenty more to come. So, uh, please check out the channel, check out the videos, please subscribe. Hopefully you can come back and check all that out. Uh, turn notifications on so you don't miss anything. That's going to do it for this one though. Thanks everyone for listening, for listening. Goodbye.